Hey everybody, welcome to Squad Pod Sports, where we bring you our thoughts on the latest games and news around the sports world. Um, a little less news this week, not really much, slow. too much else slow. going. It's a little slow this week, um, but we do got a lot of NBA to catch up on and uh, some NHL news. But I do actually do I have some ta- uh, little tidbits here and there for the NFL. Um, a big free agency signing in the NFL. Exactly, that's the biggest thing coming out of the NFL is JJ Watt signing with the Arizona Cardinals out of all teams. You know. That was one team I didn't really hear about in the J.J. Watt sweepstakes. Did you hear that he changed his Peloton bio to SB56, and then it was um, B-U-F, yeah. C-L-E, and Green? I think it's G-G, yeah. Yeah. Like, he he was leading everybody on. Like, he was just like, oh, that's where I'm going? Okay. He knew. He, like, he knew, like... It just kind of—it's <laughs> interesting to see him make that move. It would be nice to see him back there with Chandler Jones in the backfield, though, or uh, you know, attacking quarterbacks and stuff like that. Like it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, and the Cardinals gave him a, a two-year deal, thirty-one mil, uh, twenty-three mil guaranteed. So do got Damn. paid in Arizona. Yeah. They're like, we need you. Even though yeah. I don't know what they're getting, you know, but I hope I hope he plays a full season. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> so if, uh, I saw this little interesting thing. It's like the Cardinals got J.J. Watt and DeAndre Hopkins, and the and Texans got David Johnson in a second round pick. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, man. At the end of the day. But, yeah. Uh, so I mean that see, that uh, defense should be nice. He had to ask to wear that ninety nine because the ninety nine was retired. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I saw that now. You. They announced today that he's also going to be wearing 99. So that's pretty cool, man. Well, if anybody's going to have a, a number unretired for him, it's like a J.J. Watt or a yeah. type of shit. Um, J.J. Watt is one of three players in NFL history to win Defensive Player of the Year award three times along uh, Lawrence Taylor and Aaron Donald. So two from our era. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty crazy altogether. Um, a lot of uh, another big name rumor. It's not free agency. But uh, the latest buzz is what's going on with Russ? What's going on with Russell Wilson over there in Seattle? You, you know, you've all the headlines. It's inevitable that he's gone. Yeah, like that's, they that's also what they want you to believe that he was going to Buffalo, Cleveland, or Green Bay just a couple of days ago too. Saying that he now, wants to go to the Bears. I'm saying about JJ Watt. So oh, JJ Watt. Yeah, I don't, know what, Watt. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what to believe. I think until we see it. I don't see any reason to think Russ is actually... Exactly. I mean, the J.J. Watt thing proved it, you know. Like, you well, really not... can't trust... Exactly. Any, ...anything that, like, the media is saying, you know. Exactly. Um, I did have some other things here for the NFL. Um, Washington football team's parting ways with Alex Smith. He's going to be a we free agent. He's going to get to go sign wherever he wants. Um, Good. Play in New England. Uh, you think he's going to go to New England? I don't know. I I think that'd be awesome. Like, why not? <laughs> if we can't get anybody in the draft, and if we don't, you know, sh- if we strike out in free agency, say Cam even leaves, like, eh, fuck it, Alex Smith for another year, like, true. Maybe. That's not a bad dude to have. It's not. He could you be a nice game. Washington player. football team to the playoffs. Exactly. Um, <laughs> now they got Heineke back there. Yeah. Uh, Texans released Duke Johnson. So he's going to be looking for a new team. They re-signed David Johnson. Yeah, they re-signed David Johnson today. So that he's going to be the running back one. Um, I saw what your your boy, your Patriots, pretty much everybody's going to be coming back. Uh, that, that opted out, Dante Hightower, Patrick Chung, Marcus Cannon. Uh, they're all planning to be back in 2021. Um, so that's really good, man. That That's yeah. definitely going to help your squad out. Exactly. The only thing is they're all another year older. <laughs> Um, another thing here, Titans release, oh, crap, I exited out of it, where'd it go? Titans release somebody. <laughs> uh, crap, I don't have to find it again, damn it. Um, Miami Dolphins have, and Packers, Aaron Jones have mutual interest, so man. I saw it again. Tries tagging him probably. I did see something about that as well. So, so I mean, that's probably the most likely scenario. I, I don't see they, he's part of the championship equation as far as that goes. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
Russell stuff. Um, Deshaun Watson met with the head coach finally for the Texans, and he told him, hey, man, it's not for me. I don't want to be here. Get me out of here. I respect you. But- what would be the point of that? Because you know he doesn't want to be there. He's not going to play another snap in Houston, whether he gets fined or not. Yeah, and that's that's what it pretty much they keep saying now is he's willing to pay all these fines and willing to skip regular season games. So, I mean, it's like, who's going to crack first? Probably the Texans. Probably the Texans. I, I don't see him even being on the team come the start of the season. He might get fined for a couple of training camp. It's like, yeah, but and then they'll find I don't him. Think it'll they'll there. get a deal done. Yeah. Well, I don't even think yeah, he'll... Man, where do you think he's going to land? I don't know, man. Especially with them being so like confident on we're not traded him. It just makes it even so hard to even like talk now, about. You think that hurts his value like at all? The more they wait? The more like, they wait, yeah. the more desperate it becomes. You know, yeah. cheaper he'll be. Teams going to start trying to lowball him. <laughs> yeah. And you have to trade know. him at that point. At, at some point, they're going to have to move him. Yeah. No I'm sure they'll, get, the I'm sure they'll get some, a nice trade, though. I'm sure they'll get definitely something, but probably not enough to help that organization turn it around, <laughs> you no. know, right away. The only um, thing that could help them would be, like, getting Trevor Lawrence or something like that. Yeah, but, I mean, so I don't think that they have any first rounders or anything. So, <laughs> um, t- I found what I was going to say before. The Titans released uh, wide receiver Adam Humphreys. Uh, New England Patriots almost signed him last time, so keep your eye open and see if them Patriots going to sign Adam Humphreys. Seems like a wide receiver we would sign, so that makes sense. (laughs) See what Um, happens. I don't know. Um, Will Fuller is not going to be a franchise tag recipient and will become a free agent, so maybe you guys go out and cop Will Fuller. He's a pretty nice receiver. I saw Kyle Van Noy is going to be cut by the Dolphins, and that's pretty good news for my Patriots. Yes, that because... was going to I was going to get to that. That is pretty surprising because um, he just signed a four year deal, I believe, with them, and he yeah. just had the first year. Um, he signed a four year, fifty one mil contract last off season, and included a thirty mil guaranteed. Whew. But yeah, and I guess I don't know if it's just due to the salary cap cuts because I knew we were going to be seeing some some pretty crazy cuts this off season, but. Damn. Yeah, it was a big contract. So, I mean, like, I guess they had to get rid of him. Like you yeah. said, just a cap casualty. Yeah. But I, mean, I hope I he ends up coming back with the Patriots. But, yeah, that's a possibility. That would be nice for your Patriots. Um, and also today, the Vikings released Kyle Rudolph. Been there yeah, for 10, after 10 years. years. Yeah, out of here. That's someone else that they're talking about potentially be with my Patriots. That doesn't surprise me. You guys need, like, a nice tight end. We have no veteran tight end presence up there. Give Cam Newton a Kyle Rudolph and see what happens. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Multiple executives in the NFL believe it's a foregone conclusion that Patriots will trade star cornerback Stephon Gilmore. He's gone. Um, Yeah. I mean, I I knew there was rumors about it all this time, but I just didn't know how concrete it was. But, I mean, it just seems like all signs are pointing towards. It's like, why wouldn't you? You know, like, he's going to be way too expensive, and the Patriots have done this time and time and time and time and time and time again. This is just more as usual, you know. They're not (laughs) going to pay him again. They paid him um, that huge deal once, you know. Yeah. Now we have all this money to rebuild a franchise. You're not going to pay him again. Yeah, you guys got a lot of money to work with, so that's nice for you guys. Bill been cooking the books over He's there. He's take all the scraps from these teams that can't afford the these players, like Kyle Van Noy or Humphreys, stuff like that. And just... He's just waiting. He's like, before everything, he was just automatically like, with everything in the pandemic, they're going to have to lower the salary cap. And by doing that, they're going to have to cut some nice players around the league. You know and you what? know who's going to be I'm there to have a bunch the nice of players. Opt out so <laughs> they can come back during that good season here when we're actually trying to make a run for it. It all makes sense now. Players. You said you got to trust them. Belichick. It makes sense. Like that's something that's something an evil genius would do, and Bill Belichick's an evil genius. <laughs> um, and here's someone that like I don't I don't, I don't think he's a genius because uh, Dak Prescott's apparently looking to get uh, Patrick Mahomes money right behind Patrick Mahomes money, and I'm like, better go out there and 
Aqua Bro. Bikini and just break his leg. <laughs> like that's that also broke today, and everyone's just like, "What? <laughs> you want close to like five hundred mil?" We'll see. Who's not gonna get anywhere near that? No, I'll miss it, unless he signs another one year deal and goes out and balls this year. You and then know? tries to get it, yeah. And then like right. maybe Dallas goes deep in the playoffs or something, or when a game or five year deal right now. Yeah, I mean that's what the whole like fight has been over. Apparently, is whether it's a four year or five year deal. And I mean I don't know. I mean there's been rumors like who knows if the rumors are true, but that like the Cowboys aren't even sold on Dak. That's why like right. it's been taking so long. So they're trying know. to get their hands on Sean somehow or Russ. Oh my God, I don't I don't want either of them in the division. Fuck that. <laughs> um. <laughs> Apparently, another quarterback controversy. The 49ers have called the Panthers about a trade for Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I can see that. I mean, if they're really doing that, then Jimmy G is definitely out the door. Yeah. And I mean, he's going to have to, he's going to get to choose where he goes because he has that no trade clause we talked about. Right. Maybe a quarterback for the Patriots. Nice little reunion there, yeah. you know? Patriots. As, if he could stay healthy, I would definitely take that 100%. Oh, dude, no doubt, dude. Super Bowl as a backup and the Super Bowl as a starter. So, Someone already pretty much knows the system and everything. Exactly. That would be nice. I would love Fucking that. Play. Um, but I think that's it. Yeah, that's all the NFL news I have. Um, I try to gather as much little it, tidbits and information I can throughout the week, kind of fill up some NFL talk. We right. love some NFL talk. Pretty much the only other stuff I would have NFL-wise would be Patriots. So I'll save that for now. Patriots. Oh, I did have one more thing. Um, apparently, Tom Brady could have been on the Saints if Drew Brees retired last year. Really? Yeah. So uh, that's that was via Adam Schefter. So, I don't think I mean, it would have mattered where he went. They probably would have still in the. Oh, I know. They probably would have. Super. Yeah. If not so, I mean, in it. That's even scarier, man. Like, yeah. Felt like if he would have went to the Saints, maybe the Colts. Yeah. Maybe if he like goes to the Saints and then AB comes to the Saints and Fournette comes to the Saints and you know what I mean like all the and Gronk comes to the Saints and not, yeah it doesn't matter where it's gonna happen. Oh my God! Yeah, please just let it happen. Just let it happen. We'll see what happens <laughs> next year, man. I don't know if they'll be the same team because like even the Chiefs weren't the same as they were two years ago. You know where they were just like as dominant as. It's not like the Bucks were killing it all season long. Yeah. Um, so we'll yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, even Baltimore, too. And I saw yeah. there's they were saying today it was that uh, apparently they're having trouble coming to terms with an actual, like, extension with them and Lamar. Not, like, whether they're going to do it or not, but, like, they can't figure out what the best deal is. Okay. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe Lamar's going to be the next disgruntled QB that's like, get me <laughs> out of here. Get me out of here. He's in a good Oh, my God. Right? Where's Lamar Jackson going to go? <laughs> I like them in Baltimore. I don't want to see him go anywhere else right now. Yeah. Yeah, true. He fits Baltimore so well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we can roll into some NBA. I know you probably have your, your hot and knots this week. Of course. This week, um, man... Let me actually rewind a little bit here because I wanted to double check something. Yeah, Houston and I mean, not Houston, uh, Cleveland, who was on a 10 game losing streak last squad pod. They were number one on the list. <laughs> they were number three on the hot part this year, or this, uh, this segment here. Four game winning streak, but now they're still four and six over the last 10. You know, okay. Miami, six straight, seven and three over the last 10. They're heating up. It's pretty. It's pretty good to see because of how how troubling they were all all beginning of the year. You know, Jimmy yeah. G being hurt, just all the injuries they were dealing with. Milwaukee sent here five game winning streak, five and five over the last ten. So they're kind of bouncing back into things mid season here. Yeah. Got the New York Knicks on a three game winning streak, who have been hot. Yeah, they have been great over the last 10 like dude the knicks i think it's like their best start since 2012 2013 season <laughs> great it's like they're barely over 500 if if at all and Tom Tibbs over there coaching the knicks. then um i got some honorable mentions here as far as that goes i got two game winning streak for phoenix and dallas uh both of them are eight and two over the last 10 as well and then i had brooklyn 
on they're only on a one game winning streak, but they're nine and one over the last ten. They are coming on fire here. Yeah. James Harden and Kyrie Irving are playing great. Kyrie's missing time, I think, now recently here. But even with uh, Kevin Durant out, Brooklyn's killing it. It's it's getting yeah, scary. They're about to take the top seed from Philly here. Right, right. Even though Embiid's still playing good ball. Um but yeah, that's true. Houston, number one on the knot at twelve straight losses. <laughs> They've broke the scale. Here. It's 0 and ten. And then you got Minnesota who's still on a losing streak at eight straight, one and nine over the last ten. Oh man. Um, Orlando and Indy. Are both on four game losing streaks, man. Yeah. And who is only on a one game losing streak is going to stay on this list because they are one and nine over the last 10. <laughs> yeah. And I saw that Dallas is, are picking up as well. They're eating yeah. two over their last 10. They so, kind of turned things around. They were going through it for a little while. The rankings had Luca jump from fifth to third as far as uh, MVP voting. Like, wow. Where, where he's going. So, like, they're definitely coming on a little bit here, but they have a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do if they want to like actually make an impact in the playoffs here. Oh yeah, We're, definitely. They're at a tenth seed right now, so we'll see what happens. But that's that's the list for the, for this week here. Nice. Um, I do have some like little bit bits and pieces of news as well. Um, Nets wave three players: um, Noah Vonleh, Iman Shumpert, and Andre Robertson. Um, we've talked about it a little bit. I think we talked about it before how. Uh, I only think we talked about it with Alex, how they're going to be like putting them on 10 day contracts. They're not going to sign them to like a year or whatever. I I, I think right. it's just to keep them like on the, at least on the team. So they don't go through the waivers. Just I rotate know. them more or less. Yeah. Cause you uh, got to Got to sign them at least to a 10 day. And then like you're saying, so, that, so they're not clearing waivers there so they can at least keep them. Yeah. Uh, the Utah Jazz are the first team in NBA history to make 53 pointers over a two-game span. Damn, that's surprising. <laughs> yeah, over oh, that's it's crazy, dude. Uh, like the Jazz have just been lights out. Like still the best the team in the NBA. Yeah, single digit misses right now at eight. Um, this is pretty surprising. Uh, Zion Williamson is the fifth player in the shot clock era to average 25 points per game on 60% shooting through his first 30 games of a season. Um, he's the first since Charles Barkley in 87, so, 88. He's, he's putting in the work. Oh know, yeah. Far- he's doing it, man. He's just not getting like, he's not getting talked about nearly as much. I like last year. Last year, I think he was overhyped and this year's new hype is mellow. I, so. Yeah. Exactly. I, I agree with you. I think last year he was definitely overhyped, but this year, like, they were right. This dude's they out here. Right. Balling. They, <laughs> he's out here balling. He was dealing with a lot of injuries at the beginning of his career. Yeah, that's true. Um, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Kemba Walker, Marcus Smart have only played 28 total minutes together this season. <laughs> and that's like all the whole start. I thought you were going to say 28 games at first. No, and then I was thinking, like, minutes. Oh, that's a minutes. lot of no minutes oh my god minutes. so they're still sitting at fifth in the in the east even yeah. with that fact you know yeah they, they had a bad they were sliding for a bit i mean they're trying to right the ship at this point yeah and they were uh, talking about brad stevens possibly being on the hot seat and then like during the conversation they were like there's no way because if he gets fired he's the hottest head coach on the market hands down like well, hands no down dude well i mean it's not like he hasn't done anything for him he takes some like on a decent run every year. It's in conference finals at least two or three times. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a, he's a hell of a head coach. It's just, just finding the right pieces, man. More or less that they were having, like, and then they convinced themselves while they were talking about it. Like, yeah. Like, no. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. It would be crazy to let this guy go. Mm-hmm. Um, the Raptors apparently are looking to move on from Kyle Lowry. They wanted to uh, reward Kyle Lowry by sending him to a contender. Or go send him with his boy in San Antonio. Or say, so, yeah. Or set him to with his boy, DeMar, <laughs> in San Antonio. Well, in sixth right now, so they're a playoff team. Send him to yeah. San Antonio. Um, but the names mentioned uh, is the Sixers, the Clippers, and the Heat. Ooh. Kapaz. Man, I think if he goes to the Heat, that could be, like, what they would need. Like, at least a next-level piece. Like, they need a better player that would play great next to Jimmy Butler. Exactly. That sounds pretty good to me, man. That would oh, be let me see good. that. 
the NBA announces that the NBA Rising Stars game will not be played this year due to limitation of uh, having All Star events all in one night. So the the oh that's why they're not going to play it. <laughs> Rising Stars, but I guess they're still going to like select the rosters like to see who would be all. Uh-huh. But they're not going to play the game. I got um the list of the slam dunk three point and the ghost challenge players that were uh, announced so far or this year. We got Obi Toppin. This is a slam dunk from the Knicks. There, Obi Toppin. Yeah. Then we got uh, Afrini Simmons from Portland, and then Cassius Stanley from Indiana. To okay. be honest, Obi Toppin is the only one that I really know as far as like been able to watch him game like play. Yeah. Uh, especially since he was so highly like. Uh, Sought after coming out of college, they were talking about him a lot. You saw a lot of film on him, but I haven't really seen him too, too much uh, this year. I know the Knicks are doing great, but I don't know too much about Simmons or Stanley there. So it's going to be interesting to see what they can pull for this dunk contest. Yeah. Three point contest is kind of loaded. Yeah. Uh, as, as usual, you got your boy, Zach Levine, Zach Donovan Mitchell, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. So two Celtics. Yeah. Devin Baker, who's player of the month this month. And then Stephen Curry, who's a human three-point machine. Yeah. I'm hoping my boy Zach take home the gold. That'd be hoping. nice, man. Man, I was kind of like, I keep hope, hoping that he's going to get back in that dunk contest one one of these years. But I, I think he's just trying to save his save his knees. Yeah. Then I got uh, the skills competition. It's going to be Robert Covington. Luca this year is going to be in it. Chris Paul, old head's going to be in it this okay, year. Okay, okay. <laughs> Julius Randle, who's having a great year with New York. Oh, and yeah. DeMontis Sabanis and Nikolai Vujicic. So pretty well-rounded uh, skills challenge there as well. It should be a cool night. Because you said they're doing it all the same night. Skills challenge, dunk, all that, and the game? Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. It's all going to be in one night. It's be like five hours worth of shit. <laughs> um, speaking of Grant, I actually uh, have the odds for the most improved player of the year, and he is number one. On the most improved player of the year, Jeremy Grant. Then we got Christian Wood, Jalen Brown, Julius Randle, Zach Levine, uh, Shy Gilgius Alexander, Chris Boucher. Sean, and, Sean, yeah, yeah. I, I think they just call him SGA most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Boucher I, and Colin Sexton is eighth. Colin Sexton's from the ball of this year too. Um, and we spoke about Demar Rosen a little bit. Um, I actually saw a thing on him, and apparently the Spurs are shopping him and Marcus Aldridge before mm. the deadline. So, so maybe they team up elsewhere then. He team up in Miami. <laughs> oh my god! If they have that much cap room, yeah. Be crazy. Maybe get like Aldridge and Kyle Low- and Lowry, maybe because I feel like they need another big man. Like I don't come think. On- be able to both go to any team as far as Sixers or Clippers. I was just saying because I figured like Aldridge would be a little cheaper than Demar would. Yeah, no, no, that's more realistic. Definitely, I'm just saying I'm still thinking about Demar. I don't know if oh, still yeah. those two would end up on in any situation there together. Yeah, I agree. Unless uh, it's like a shit team, but fuck that. With a lot of money to spend, right? Uh, Jimmy Butler was chosen to be an All Star, but apparently he refused to attend because uh, Bam wasn't going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> he said fuck that that's a homie that's like Bobby <laughs> Schroeder he's like my boy Bam didn't get all stu- nah fuck that I ain't uh, going nope I not happening fuck you not happening uh, Victor Oladipo turned down a two year 45 mil contract extension with the Rockets um, he's expected to pursue a longer term deal either with the Rockets or elsewhere yeah I can see that for sure especially like he had that injury a couple years ago, right? So, like, he's yeah, probably... Yeah, just, just last year. Last mm-hmm. year? He's looking for security. security. Oh, yeah, definitely. He wants to stay somewhere. Like, I don't even know if he was expected to be traded, you know, from the Pacers. So, right. I, I think he's expecting to stay there, but who knows now. Um, the Hawks, this is break. This is pretty new news. Uh, dismissed coach uh, Lloyd Pierce. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently the stories are coming out that he didn't get along with like Trey and him didn't get along. Trey didn't like what they were doing. Uh, I guess the front office felt the same way. So yeah, out of here. Trey is the money maker as far as they're concerned. You're like Trey's not happy. (laughs) Sorry, man. Who who made him upset? The coach? All right. (laughs) Fire. Get him out of here. All right, man. (laughs) 
Uh, after missing 10 consecutive games in the league's health and safety protocol, uh, Milwaukee Milwaukee Bucks guard Drew Holiday is going to return or Fine. has returned already. Uh, like they returned against the Clippers. Finally. Yeah, finally. And so, uh, speaking of COVID, your your guys' games got postponed, right? Chicago and Toronto. Toronto didn't have any eligible players. Ah, uh, okay, okay. But Toronto's going through some COVID right now. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I don't know if I think they had a couple games postponed already. Okay. Do it. But yeah, I think we play tomorrow against the Pelicans now. Um, Kevin Durant apparently will not be with the Nets until after the All-Star break. The Nets yeah. announced. So he's just going to chill. It's interesting, man, because like Alex was talking about AD, you know, so like what do you think about Kevin Durant's situation? Like, do you think it's just precautionary or? or I'm what? sure it's just precautionary, you know, because you don't want to have like, cause it's exactly what happened with him on Golden State. You know, mm-hmm. he they gave him to go ahead to come back and he went out there and tore his shit. But when he was I think, playing this year, he was great. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure they just can't. They don't want to risk him having to sit out another two years. Yeah. You know? Making him for the playoffs this season. So, uh, exactly save him, and it's not like they really need him right now, anyway. Right, they're doing just fine. James Harden's trying to push his way into the MVP conversation right now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He's just going fine. Ahead. Kev, I got me, me and Kyrie got this. Lakers. Uh, it kind of reminds me, like, because the Lakers were slumping um, without AD. They're still twenty four and eleven. Still second in the NBA as far as record goes. Second in the West, but second in the NBA overall as far as oh. the record goes. So I, I know it's looking kind of sketchy over there, but things are just fine. They they inserted uh, Markeith Morris into the starting lineup, yeah. along with uh, like rotating with Kuzma and all that. So like it's it's been working. It's been working. Okay. Skirting past. Uh, uh, NBA suspending Malik Beasley twelve games for conduct stemming from charges in the off season. Uh, there really wasn't any more details. Just pretty much that's it. Uh, since the start of the last season, there has been three instances of an eight-point favorite losing by 25 points or more, and all three of them are the Clippers. <laughs> of course. Surprisingly, Doc Rivers isn't coaching the team this year. <laughs> um, since entering the league in 2012 and 2013, Damian Lillard has made 28 game tying or go ahead shots inside the final 20 seconds of the game, including playoffs, and that's the most in NBA over that span. Doesn't surprise me. He's probably the most clutch player out there right now. Like he if, you, is. if you're asking he, for I think a he's last the most shot, stuck on player, dude. Absolutely. Like, Dame is that dude. I would consider him for the MVP this year. He's averaging. Yeah. I would have done it. He's averaging 29 right now. I saw he was supposed to be in the three-point contest, and he pulled out because he wanted to rest. Okay. He's like, nah, not, I ain't going down to that shit. I got to save my body, wait for CJ to come back. I'm doing this by myself. Yeah. <laughs> wait for CJ um, to get back. This does have to do with Flyers also, but the Sixers, um, at least this is just PA, but... Uh, uh, Philly has matched state's, state's guidelines, so now the Sixers and Flyers and Phillies will also will have fans in the stands now, from now on, and at least in some capacity. Okay. Um, so PA starting to have some fans back in the stands. Maybe, maybe that will help a little bit. Some struggling teams. <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody in, in particular you're talking nope. about? Nope. Okay. Not, uh, not, I'm not saying struggling. <laughs> um but yeah man i think that's all of the nba news i have pretty Uh, much i had i did have one little fact here yeah actually i I did have the nba release their second half of the schedule by the way yeah yeah they they did um and the only thing really stood out to me was that the grizzlies and the spurs are going to each have to play 40 games in a 68 day stretch where the clippers will only have to pay play 34 games so there's kind of some separation, but they had to do what they had to do to fit all these games in here. Yeah, and plus some got postponed, too. Maybe that could be it, too. Right. That's why teams are playing extra games. And then I had one little like milestone here. Buddy Held, Ohio, uh, he was the fastest ever to reach 1,000 three-pointers made. He just passed Stephen Curry. Really? I didn't see that at all. That's being slept on. 
Steph did 369 games. Buddy did it in 500 or 350. So he did it in 19 less games. He broke his record. Yeah. So, hey, like you said, he's being slept on right now. <laughs> he's a player, like, coming out that was very, very compared to Kobe Bryant. So, like, I remember paying attention to him because they kept comparing him to Kobe. So, like, yeah. and then he, he ended up getting drafted to Sacramento, I think. And I was just, I think he was to Sacramento. Um uh, I don't know, I don't about remember it, but I remember just being like, damn, because the Lakers had a pretty high pick that year. I was like, what are they going to use it on, buddy? But I think he won like <laughs> Naismith Player of the Year. He was he was balling in college, man. Yeah. From NC State. But uh, I think he was from NC State. I'm not sure. But that's pretty much all the NBA news I had as well. Uh, I saw your boy, Bron Bron, and the uh, soccer player going back and forth. Yeah, talk about something. Man, I didn't really pay attention to that. It's just I, another. It's just another dude telling LeBron to keep his mouth shut, like about stuff. And LeBron's like, "Nah, I, I got my platform. I'm gonna use it. You don't like it? Don't say shit." Don't I mean, I agree with I agree with LeBron on this one. You know, LeBron right. has the right to, to say what he wants, as man. As far as some like TMZ NBA news, I do have yeah. one. Rumor. I do have one that kind of pertains to that. Yeah. So, apparently, LeBron's house is for sale, and I'm like. What's this supposed to be? <laughs> I'm trying to make sense of this in my head right now. Park he, put his, he put his Los Angeles house for sale. So, like, is he going to go play he somewhere gonna, else? Uh, you going to buy a big-ass penthouse in Chicago and you're going to... Him and AD go to Chicago? Imagine that. Like, AD just signed this massive deal. LeBron's just like, oh, I'm out, man. I'm tired of this shit. Don't He's tired of playing. Draft Bron Jr. Bronny Jr. <laughs> And then he's gonna come to Chicago to play with him. I don't think there's anything to that rumor, but there was just it was interesting. I figured I'd bring it up. I um, mean, that's always something that people like search at, look at too. Right. Like I remember hearing like during the whole Tom Brady thing, he's like Tom Brady sold his house in Boston. He's I'm like, he's, oh, looking, uh, he's looking at certain houses in this place or in this place uh, or whatever. Uh, oh, Tom Brady's in Tampa Bay visiting school districts. No, that doesn't mean anything. Size of the Buccaneers. <laughs> what? Buccaneers? I remember being like, out of all the teams, the Buccaneers were like what nobody expected. Just no. getting ears. They got Jameis. They didn't even get rid of Jameis at that time. That was a surprise. <laughs> Jameis was chilling, just like, what? Well, get to with Tom Brady? Like, yeah, no. Tom Sorry, Jameis. <laughs> like, oh, got Drew Brees. Yeah, that's true. That is true. That's not a bad place to go. New Orleans could have been a lot worse. Right. Um, I don't really have too much NHL news, uh, really. Uh, I mean, NHL is very, very quiet league. You know, you don't really get much publicity from the NHL. Nothing like headline grabbing, you know. It's yeah, usually just... just games, man. That's all you get with the NHL is like you ain't getting really much of the drama. That you get with the NBA or storylines, really, um, it's it's just hockey, man. <laughs> That's all it is. You got like who's been rolling in the standings? You know, any teams that have been hot lately? Yeah, I mean, let's take a look here. Um, they just have streaks here for hockey. They don't have like out of the last ten. Gotcha. Uh, let me take a look here. Vegas is on a three-game winning streak. Uh, Washington is on a three-game winning streak. Oh, Tampa Bay Lightning is killing it with a four-game winning streak. I mean, like... Last year, right? Stanley Cup? Tampa Bay won that last year. Damn Lightning. They are so they are so good, though, man. Um, they're really good right now. Um, what's their record? They're currently sitting at 14-4 and four with one overtime Damn. loss. Yeah, they're really good right now. I mean, the Maple Leafs, they're 17 and 4. Maple Leafs, like them Canadians, they are balling. <laughs> they are balling right now. Um, they're on a three point win streak as well. I mean, Carolina is also uh, the Hurricanes. They're really good too. They're uh, 15 and 6. And they're on a three game winning streak. Uh, winning streak. Uh, Philly, we just lost one against the Penguins. It's all right. We play them two more times. We're going yeah. to. In a row. Yeah, we're going to play him two more times in a row. Sidney Crosby's out. I thought that's we were going to get him tonight, but they do play better without Sidney sometimes. 
So it's all right. We're going back to we going to Philly on Sunday, and they're gonna have fans, so, and they, it's gonna be all right. We're gonna so on track. There. So do they play Pittsburgh, Philly, Pittsburgh, or is it Pittsburgh, Philly, Philly? I think it's Pitts, Pittsburgh and Philly, Philly. Okay, so you got two home games. Uh, I think so. That'd be interesting if it was Pittsburgh, Philly, Pittsburgh. Like if you like, you know, just yeah, travel back that. Way. <laughs> I feel like that'd be a dope job. Except in Pittsburgh <laughs> tonight. Um. Oh no, it's in Pittsburgh next, and then Philly. Two. Okay. Two and then Philly. That would definitely make a lot more sense. <laughs> you know, but. Um, but yeah, I mean the Flyers. Uh, we won a couple games in a row, and then we just lost to the Pittsburgh. I mean we're still above them in the standings technically, so mm-hmm. fuck them right now. I mean, but we're still fourth. We're technically, I think it's the top four of each division is going to the playoffs. To I think it's like the I think they're still doing the round robin. I could be wrong, um, but I mean in the East division is Washington, New York, Boston, and then Philly. Uh, we're only one point behind you guys. For some reason, Boston gets beat by all these other teams, but they just Philly cannot beat Boston. Bro. <laughs> Boston is Philly's kryptonite because they go and play other teams and they lose. And we I, don't lose. I don't understand it. Um, let's go to the I'm other. sure you guys will get us by the end of the year, man. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we play each other like four more times, I think. Uh, right. But the Central Division, you got Carolina, Florida, and Tampa Bay. Uh, East, you got Washington, New York. I already went over that. Boston, Philly. North, you got Toronto, Winnipeg, and then Edmonton. And then the West, you got Vegas, St. Louis, and uh, Minnesota. Wild. But I mean, okay. yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, you pretty much know who are the great teams as of right now, and they're all just kind of fighting for different orders in the playoffs. Right. Point. Because it's, it's, Still early, I guess, but we only do have a couple months, you know, left until it's gonna be like crunch time. Maybe only a month and a half, two months until it's crunch time where they're really pushing for the playoffs. Yeah, but at this point, you're kind of starting to figure out who's gonna be, who's gonna be who in the in the playoffs. You know, who's mm-hmm. gonna be the top teams. Teams are figuring out their identity. There are some teams that there that have been having some COVID issues or getting over some COVID issues, and then there's injuries on top of that. So I mean, you got to factor all that in. Um, right. Because I know, like, I think Boston was missing a couple pieces. Uh, Pittsburgh, they were missing some, and now Crosby's out. Um, and then Philly, they had like half their roster almost <laughs> on like the COVID list for a minute. And now everybody's healthy. So now they're trying to get everybody back in the rhythm of playing right. together. Then you're going to have teams that get hit later in the season as well, closer to playoff time, if not in the playoffs. And that's exactly. always going to be a factor. Exactly. But I mean, yeah, there's not really too much like news as far as NHL that I've, that I could see. Um, but I mean, that's just kind of, I'm not fully in on the NHL. Maybe I'm just not, I need to look harder. But I'm not finding I'm not seeing too many storylines or anything crazy within the NHL right now. But if there is, we're gonna report on it. You bet your ass. <laughs> uh, you wanna go? Talk, to... Oh, we didn't Come talk on. about it last week, so I want to talk about it this week. Um, oh. our boy Tiger Woods is fine. Is he's doing better? He's out. It here. made me so happy to see all them golfers wearing Tiger Woods clothes, like you know the red shirt and the black pants. Apparently he even went out and said like he turned on the TV and saw that and it's just like it was heartwarming like imagine that man like that's awesome man and I'm glad that he's like he's decent now he's like making a recovery after surgery and everything apparently like he had a lot of damage on his legs which is not good so who knows man hopefully he can make a full recovery and and come back. The moment we see Tiger Woods out there, whether he's like with crutches or a cane or anything like that, as far as like, but out on the course, like just during an event, not saying necessarily even playing, just like, I can't wait to see him back out there. Oh, shit. It's Tiger coming back. He's going to be Tiger's limping with the cane. But no, Tiger ain't coming back. Not yet. Not coming back. He's going to be not like yet. Dark Knight Rises, like, <laughs> like Bruce Wayne, like, oh, like have the cane and shit. And then got to uh-huh. oh, come back. He's going to train and come back, man. And then he's going to have another comeback win, man. He's going to have another. He's gonna win the Masters again. Ty, go out on. He's like, that's it. Like, drop the club. I'm out. 
and then let his son take over from there. Yeah, and then his son's going to be dominating. For the- <laughs> <laughs> That's what we got to look forward to, is talking about his son dominating for the next 20 years. Hey. Man, if that if he's half as good as Tiger, he's gonna be talked about. He's gonna be on the tour, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think he even outplayed Tiger in that like game that they were playing. Right. He was carrying him. He yeah. Was, Tiger say like Charlie's carrying me right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's how that's all the news I have. Um, but we do have our bias bubbles, and of course yeah. the crazy sports attack do. I got a couple things here uh, for the Patriots. One, I, we were talking about Van Noy a little bit. I would love to see him come back. Uh, Devin McCourty was tweeting about it. He tweeted yeah, like a saw picture that. of one of our like season ticket holders from like a, pre- a previous year to had Van Noy on it. Like, hey man, like he was a huge part of our team for the Super yeah. Bowl run. Huge part of it. Um, I don't know about that salary. I don't know how that all works as far as the fifty-one million contract he signed. Had- do a new contract since they release him, or probably, and then the the Dolphins would owe him whatever guarantee that they owe him. You yeah, know, the um, contract carries over if you trade him. Right, right, but if he was released, so I don't yeah, know. That works. I don't think it. But um, this is kind of interesting. I don't think it's too shady, but there's always some type of shady news out of New England. <laughs> but oh, but I don't, shady uh, in New England. Per per judge's ruling, okay, the Patriots have emails that were like deemed p- private. They they don't have to be revealed to the public right now. Okay, what does that even mean? Their emails revealing salaries of assistant coaches, and the Patriots claim that they would suffer competitive and commercial harm if the emails were released. Per the judge's ruling, he was it was granted that they will, will remain private for now. So I don't know coaches on other teams on their payroll or some shit. <laughs> like investigation going on right now with it's it's four emails between Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft from 2018 to 2019 were submitted as evidence in a lawsuit and counter lawsuit between former Patriots assistant Brett Belima and the University of Arkansas. Okay, the foundation, the Arkansas sued uh, Belima arguing that former Razorbacks head coach violated terms of his buyout after he was fired in 2017. Okay. So the terms of the buyout included 11.9 million. That would be offset by earnings. If, uh, if he took a job elsewhere that paid more than 150,000. And then after his firing, he joined the Patriots staff as a consultant. and was paid 25,000 for his efforts later brought on as full-time sp- uh, special assistant to the head coach and was paid a hundred thousand. So that's 25,000 less than, the hundred and fifty thousand that, you know, what I mean? so like, yeah. I, it it looks like it's just a weird situation. They they it says they, the foundation cut off his payments at four point five million, saying he had duty to mitigate. It's it just seems very messy. But that like, is. all the emails were remaining private right now, and that was the main headline that caught everybody's attention. Patriots emails that reveal secrets will remain private per judge's ruling. So I just wanted to get that out of the way before everybody else. Interesting. Uh, Patriots. <laughs> always something with you Patriots. It's <laughs> always something, right? Even I actually just... did find something on the Patriots I wanted to share with you. Um, the Patriots have drafted the third most QBs in the league since 2000, despite having Tom Brady on their what? roster. What? Yeah, what? They, have, they drafted the third most QBs, despite having the best quarterback in history. Um and Brady only missed games due to injury in one season in his 20-year career. Nearly all of those players failed in the NFL. Yeah. That um, so you got Tom Brady, Rohan Davey, Cliff Kingsbury, hey. Matt, Ca- Matt Castle, Kevin O'Connell, hey. Zach Robinson, Ryan Mallett, Jimmy Garoppolo, Jacoby Bressett, Danny Etling, and Jared Stidham. Yeah. But like I thought that was interesting. I was like, these dudes drafted the third most QBs, and that's while Tom Brady like over his whole career. That's why they have nobody to throw the ball to because they drafted QBs with Tom Brady at the helm. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you do it, Bill. it doesn't make any sense. They were trying to push him out the door for years. That's why it seems it's like, 
Belichick's like, I got to find somebody better than this guy. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he maybe he just didn't like Tom. He's like, fucker can win it. me some games. I just don't like him. <laughs> somebody to do the same thing he does that I can control because he couldn't control Tom Brady no more. Yeah. But um, I do have a little bit here for the Lakers as well. Um, I did, like I was saying, I, I, I talked about a little bit there with LeBron selling his house and stuff. Yeah. The last week, three game losing streak with the Heat, Wizard, and Jazz beating us, and then now on a two game winning streak beating um Portland and Golden State. Yeah. A bunch of overtime games, man. I'm tired of this overtime shit. LeBron <laughs> is getting old. Tired. He is tired. He found his weakness. Just take yeah. him to overtime. It's just ridiculous. Like it's it's too much for the old man, you know? He just needs to take a rest. <laughs> But um, that that's pretty much all I had as far as my my two teams there. Okay, um, I did have something I forgot to mention. Um, it's not really pertaining to any teams, uh, but Bill Belichick and Mike Vrabel apparently gave out their email addresses at an NFL's Women's Career uh, and Football Forum. I and saw that. They ended up getting on like a Zoom call with all of them and stuff, and like talking to them, giving them advice and everything. Like that's that super cool. cool. Go ahead and email me if you have any questions or need advice about anything, like guidance on something. Here's my personal email. I thought, I thought that was super cool, man, of them mm-hmm. to do. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, that's to let definitely what to talk about. Because I haven't really seen that anywhere else either. I saw it like reported once, and I was like, man, this should be reported everywhere. Right. Um, but I mean, I don't really have too much news. I mean, the Bulls, um, I mean, Larry Markinen is still out. I don't think we're like we talked about it before. I don't really think they're going to be active during the trade deadline. Um, they they have been sliding a little bit. They have they lost like two games in a row, I think. Maybe um, they get some get rid of assets and get um, draft capital and stuff like that. Maybe yeah. You know. so I mean, I don't know. I mean, at at this point, I mean they're out of the playoffs again. So I'm sure like the rest of the season they'll be like in and out of that eight seed possibly. Yeah. I mean. Who knows? If we make the playoffs, that's cool. If we don't, try to get a better pick, you know, help build. We'll be following along with that as it goes because maybe three, four weeks later, we're doing this and you're talking about them bulls are surging right now. <laughs> we good. We going to get like the five seed. <laughs> yeah, so let's say you can be like six or five somewhere up there. Just be like, yo. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Meanwhile, the Lakers are falling to the five or six seed. You know, like ooh, I'm over here panicking. Know, man, like they're so up and down. I feel like uh, my like the Flyers and Bulls are going through like kind of the same thing. I just know the Flyers are better than what the Bulls are. Flyers are actually a competitor in the league, like competing for the Stanley Cup. Um, but like the Bull, like at the at this point, it's like. Please win a game. Like you need to start winning games to like get back on track. Like start doing right. something. Um, but I mean, there really isn't too much news uh, with the Bulls. Uh, neither are the Flyers. Everybody's back from COVID. Everyone's healthy. Good. They just start like build the chemistry. Start winning some games here. Right. Get Bulls, back into full swing. Like completely comfortable. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like, man, if they once they're comfortable, they'll be able to like put some to get, nice wins. Get a, together. a Boston, uh, man. Even I'm though I'm wearing sure Los Angeles. Soon. Okay, let me know. Because I'm going to get some more for Kari, too. Yeah, but, I, wanted but to get sure. hockey jersey. I wanted to get a Gretzky one eventually, too. That'd be awesome. I don't know who I would get. Because, like, I want to get... I'll probably get an AD. Ooh, that would, yeah. This definitely... You should get an AD jersey. I think because, like, everybody knows this is a six... LeBron James, Lakers jersey, <laughs> maybe one of a kind. Nobody else ever has this. You yeah, know? Nobody else has this number six LeBron James Lakers <laughs> jersey. Exclusive. It was, <laughs> it was made during that three or four week period where LeBron James was like, yeah, I'm going back to number six because I'm giving Anthony was, Davis. Like, it was three. literally like three or four days between him announcing he's changed his number and then Nike saying, no, you're not, that we ordered this jersey. And it came and everything. And so I do need to get me a number 23 LeBron. And I'd love to get a number uh, or any, I don't give a fuck the number, but like an Anthony Davis jersey. Yeah, so maybe have Anthony Davis that's jersey. what I do for myself in the next order, or save football for later. Um, and maybe a Boston one. And then what, what Kyrie would want, he'd probably want some football. That's the point where I don't even know what I want anymore, man. Because like the I Bulls, know, I don't know who's going to be on the Bulls. Like, 
for just the get long- like a Pippen, a Rodman. Exactly. I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing, getting like a Pippen or a Rodman, or like get my, a custom one. Just like I, I have a custom Eagles one too, because like I don't know who else. Like I think I might get a Brandon Graham Eagles jersey. Or a Fletcher yeah, Cobb. I'd love to get a, a Ty Law Patriots jersey. Like, I'm going to start, like, the way I was thinking about it, I'm going to start getting some older Patriots jerseys. I would like to know? get a Kelsey one because I know he's not going to be around too much longer. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but, I mean, but this is the first week was... in a while that, like, well, since we started probably, I don't have any Eagles news. There is no Eagles news as of this week. It's I can't believe it myself. <laughs> there is no Eagles news. Uh the only thing I can really comment on is Jayla Hurts keeps putting out workout vids, and it is hyping me up. I'm ready to see this dude out on the field. Um, me too. It's just something I, I'm not used to seeing because Carson really never put out workout videos. He like he he's so quiet. He never he rarely put out videos. If it was, it was like of him hunting. And I was like, <laughs> are, you are you practicing? Or are you hunting? He's hunting with the dog, man. Meanwhile, well, you got Jalen Hurts like Jalen out here, just, <laughs> like lifted. He out there doing footwork and throwing bomb passes, and I'm like, yes, yes, that's what he, I want to see. He's not like it's not like Carson's old or anything. Carson's our age, you know. Yeah. But like Jalen Hurts is so much younger, so much more on the TikTok type of you know. I'm not saying he's out here posting TikToks, but like I know he's probably recording a lot and uploading a lot, whether it be Instagram yeah. or whatever. It's like all it's been is just like workout vids, and I'm like. That's what I like to see this dude in the lab doing hey, his thing. I, I watched three, four months of Cam Newton working out last year, hype to <laughs> see what I saw. True. So <laughs> last year. So workout vids are one thing, but you got to wait and see that product on yeah, the field. I, I totally understand. I just, I, it's from my point of view where I'm not used to seeing it from my, my franchise QB. If I, hopefully he's the franchise fun. QB. I'm not saying you're wrong or anything. I'm saying I was hyped too last year to see the same thing, and then I was let down. So, the only Eagles news I have this week is my growing fear that we're going to draft a QB at six, and <laughs> it's going to keep growing every up, single week. I saw a report saying you're going to trade up to three. I did too, and I, bro, I no, no, <laughs> I do not want a QB at all. Please don't. Philadelphia, if you're listening to this, please don't drop the quarterback. We need exactly. Jalen Hurts. Huh? Do you see the report come out about Mac Jones? They're saying he's a more mobile Tom Brady. I don't want Mac Jones. That's what they're... Want Jalen Hurts. It's Hurts' yeah. time season. I think Mac Jones. I, I'm pretty confident now the Patriot. Like, a lot of stuff has been happening over the last couple of weeks as far as them talking about movers and shakers in the draft, in the mock drafts. And yeah. it looks like a lot of quarterbacks that are worth a damn probably won't make it to 15. Yeah. Um, it's like first for like a worth a first round pick aren't going to make it to the Patriots at 15. They're saying we could potentially move up to 12 um, with a trade, but Stephon, get up to top. Eh, maybe I didn't think about that. Um, I don't know, man. I hope we don't take a QB. I mean, the only thing like, cause it's all like just the media outlets that are doing these mock drafts. So that's like one thing we're just, they're speculating. Um, the Merrill Reese who does the radio for the Eagles and he is like part of the Eagles organization. He like, he's, he's old. So it's weird that he was posted on Twitter as much as like, as, as much as he does, but he, po- he came out and posted like three things today about like, he thinks there's like a zero chance that Eagles are in draft a QB at six. And I'm like, that's what I like to hear. It makes me feel a little better because, like, Cause bro, he's got Jalen Hurts. You saw what he can do. Build around this dude. Get, like, Jamar Chase. Get a, a linebacker. Like, get a tackle if you need to. Yeah. I'm get telling Dante you, man. Smith. That's or, like Julio or, Jones. Or Kyle Chase. Pitts, the freak tight end, bro. That He's so yeah. fast. Like, I'd be bro. cool with any of those three. Like, get a weapon. Like, Howie, don't blow this draft. I'm so interested to see what happens at 15, man. So, and I'm super interested to see what you guys do because you're at six right now. So, <laughs> it's, you could do that. You it's could awesome, do that. but it's so scary because I know how I've seen how he draft, and I've, I'm so afraid that he's just gonna blow it, bro. It's it's like how I felt. I can only compare it to how I felt when the Lakers had like the fourth pick, and I'm like, I know we're not getting top tier talent, you know, like top, but like. Yeah. We're still going to get a damn good player, you know? So, like, I feel like the Eagles are in the same position right there. Like, you're not going to get Trevor Lawrence, but you could still get a Matt Jones. You could still get a Devontae Smith. Like, I, I would 
I want one of these studs, but I don't want it to be a QB. (laughs) And anything but a QB, please. Shoe, the wide receiver for LSU, shoe, man. Yeah, no, yeah, Jamar Chase, dude, he's a beast. Any of, like, I'd rather, like, Chase, uh, Bull from Alabama, Devontae Smith, and Pitts, dude, those are my top three who I would pick, man. Just you. No, no. <laughs> That's you. Not Jalen Hurts, who is, like, a Justin Field, bro. No, They're the same player. They're the same player. I would take... I would take Jalen Hurts over pretty much everybody else except Trevor Lawrence in that draft yeah, right now. I agree with you. I agree with you. But maybe maybe Mac Jones, but like I'm I'm not taking Mac Jones over Trevor Lawrence. That's for damn sure. You know. Uh, I mean, I'm just not. You're just creating another QB controversy, man. At this point, I'd rather him just sign like a, a Brian Ouch. Fitzpatrick or an Alex Smith or a Marcus Mariota as a backup. Mm-hmm. You know. Get one of those guys. Why do you have to draft another QB, bro? Like, that's just creating, like, unless Jalen, unless you think that Jalen's going to thrive off the competition, but, like, come on, man. Well, I don't know. No, because look what happened to Carson. Exactly. You're just creating unnecessary, like, competition and, like, another unnecessary controversy. Because you know that's all I was going to talk about is, like, right. is it going to be Jalen Hurts or this dude? Jalen Hurts or this dude? Got me thinking about. Patriots and like the last time we had a QB controversy where we were like, which one do you start? Not necessarily like, okay, he's doing so bad that somebody else needs to start. Like where we had this year with Cam and yeah. like they would pull yeah. him and put in. And it wasn't like it was necessarily like, oh, who's Bill Gusta? But like I'm thinking straight back to Garoppolo Brady. That yeah. was the last time we had a real quarterback controversy where you're just like, I don't know. And I always was like, go for Brady, obviously, but. At that mm-hmm. point, I think Brissett came in and played a game or two during that period, too. Well, yeah, that was for... Um, during the flake gate. Yeah, when he was during suspended. That. Yeah. Right. But, hey. We'll see. I, I'm hoping that we can do, like, a live a live uh, watch-along with the draft. That'd, that'd be, be cool. That'd be awesome. We should yeah. definitely oh, do wait. that. If we pick a QB, I could fucking... Go off on live stream. <laughs> It'll be like Mad Mel on like Pat McAfee's live stream last year. Oh, no, forget that. I've watched it like three times since the draft, man. God damn it! <laughs> Take my Eagles jersey off. Like you stupid sons of bitches. You draft <laughs> huh? Dress up like Mel Kiper. <laughs> bro i wish we did it last year because you should have seen my reaction whenever they drafted jalen hurts i was like what the fuck what are you doing <laughs> like, be regardless of who you draft it was in the second round at least stream the first round yeah at least stream the first round mm-hmm. uh, yeah i mean i would i would be down just to stream the first round like because i think you have a pick i don't i don't know if alex has a if the steelers have a i'm sure they do 28, 29, something like that. If if so, or I'll maybe love just... to do like a first round stream though, that'd be cool. Oh yeah. Um, but you got it, sports fact for us? I do. I got the crazy sports stat fact of the podcast. <laughs> Last week was about Ohio State. This week is about Alabama. Mm. Mm. Uh, since two thousand eight, football coach Nick Saban has uh, has as many national championships as he has home losses. And at Alabama. Hold, <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Were you telling me what? How many losses does he have? Six, it seven. Say, it doesn't say. It just says since 2008, football coach Nick Saban has as many national championships as home losses at Alabama. <laughs> I don't understand what to even Hold make up. of that. Oh. <laughs> but to be honest with you, I, I got to look it up real quick. I'm trying to look it up. I think he has seven national championships. <laughs> um, what's he at? He has five. So he has five national championships. He has lost five games at home. Oh, my God. That's ridiculous. I'm going to look up his past years, his, his record. As far as um, like his last couple seasons at Alabama, because I know he he has coached other places, 
Um, but I don't remember when he started at Alabama. I know he's been here for a good amount of time, though. So since 2008 here. Okay, so let me count the losses. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, those those are losses. They're not home losses. So this would take a while for me to figure out, but that's ridiculous. I mean, what, let me see here. He only has 23 losses total as head coach. Total. Of Alabama. He only has 23 losses total. Jesus Christ. <laughs> He's like, I think it says, it says 170 and 23. He has an uh, 0.88 winning percentage. But, um, outrageous. So it, his, it looks like his career record is, I think this is counting, um, NFL. Cause he, oh, it's not counting NFL. It looks like, looks like t- over 25 years. 